Hey everybody, and congratulations if you made it this far. So in this video, I'm going to show you some more advanced usage of CCGM. So to start, let's open up the config editor and take a look at how we can run two servers at the same time. Go down to the servers key and duplicate the one that you already have. Make sure that you give the new key a new name. Visiting the new server's settings, we just do the same configuration as before. Setting the invite color, creating a leaderboards channel, as well as a new webhook. You'll also need to set maps, modes, max players, and any other settings that you're familiar with for the server. Here you also want to make sure you change your short name, as that's also how you start your server through Discord. Next you need to set your sandbox name. Before we do that though, we'll first need to visit the sandboxy website and install the software. I already have it installed, so I skipped this step. Launch sandboxy, then create yourself a new sandbox and give it a name. Since we want to run multiple servers, we'll need to create another sandbox and give it a name as well. You can enter this name into the config and that'll tell CCGM to run the game inside of the sandbox. Now I'm going to tell my first server to run in a sandbox as well and this will just allow me to host multiple servers at once. Now that that's done, we save our config and then we'll need to run Steam in each sandbox and log into different accounts. The reason why we need multiple accounts is because we cannot run multiple games on the same Steam account. Now we'll need to make sure that each Steam account is using the batch mode launch option. Once we've added that, copy your generated CCGM config into the backend folder. And now we need to start up CCGM. Once CCGM has started, you should see that you have a new invite code, and you should notice that your new leaderboard is populating. Use the start command in Discord to start both of your servers. Oh, I made a typo. As you can see, CCGM is now running two Crab Game servers. Next up, we'll look at the tips. The first tip here you'll notice has the forward slash N. This means that you want to add a new line here. So for example, we can add a new line here or here. The other thing is the curly brackets discord invite text. Wherever you put this, CCGM will replace it with your discord invite URL. Likewise, we can put this wherever we want. Knowing these two things, you can go ahead and make your first tip. You can modify the second tip as well. If you want to add another tip, click here, go to append, then click on string. Lastly, let's say you want to add a tip, but you don't want to add it to the end. You can accomplish this by clicking where you want the new tip and choosing insert instead of append. Let's hop on over to the game mode settings. First thing I can see is the block drop sequence probability. This is the probability that block drop will be modified to use a pre-made sequence. Inside the chaos settings, you can toggle this mode on or off. 
chaos is random events and a weapon store. You can also set the probability of chaos being enabled each round. You can also customize each weapon's settings here. So for example, you can set the ammo, whether or not the weapon is purchasable, and if the server should drop the weapon, as well as how many points the weapon will cost. Custom Maps defines if your server is using Map Mod for custom maps. This option used to work, but is currently broken. Map Mode Swap Player Requirement is how many players are required for CCGM to load maps and modes that don't normally go together. Snow Brawl Swap Probability is the probability that players will be able to play on maps that don't normally support Snow Brawl. Sumo Mode is a mode where players spawn with bats and try to knock each other out of the map. Tag Swap Probability is the chance that players will be able to play tag on maps that don't normally support it. Chaos Weapon Event to Inventory defines if server weapon drops should be placed in a user's inventory. Keep in mind that enabling this will cause your ammo counts not to work. Chaos Weapon Purchase to Inventory defines if weapon purchases should be placed in a user's inventory. Next up is Kill Feed Messages. We'll start with Player Killed Player. This is the message that shows up between two players' names. So for example, player 1 dropped a fat one on player 2. Suicide messages show after a player's name. So for example, player 3 committed dead. In moderator perms, you can define what permissions moderators are given when promoted. In owner IDs, you can add the Discord user IDs for multiple users if you want to give them maximum permissions. Oh, and I almost forgot. In your server's game mode settings, you'll see this crab fight section. Anger probability is the probability the crab will be angry. When the crab is angry, it can do combos, like spikes and pounding at the same time. Max anger crab balls is how many meteors or spikes the crab can spawn in at once. Random health max is how high the crab's random health can be. Likewise, random health min is how low the crab's random health can be. Randomized health probability is the probability that the crab's health will be randomized. Randomized snowball damage probability is the probability that player's snowball damage will be randomized. Snowball damage multiplier max is the maximum number a player's snowball damage will be multiplied by. Likewise, the min is the minimum number a player's snowball damage will be multiplied by. That's gonna do it for this video, and if you guys need help, please consider joining our Discord in the description, and feel welcome to ask any questions there.